My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This week I came across a rather remarkable story in the news from the account there was an incident at Bloor Young Station in which a man was walking along the platform and an altercation took place with another man and the man was shoved onto the tracks. Miraculously, the man somehow escaped death and serious injury as a train was coming in and merely was dragged along in the front and survived the incident. I pondered the story and sat in amazement that such a thing could take place. I made the unfortunate decision, however, to go down and read the comments section, which, from what I can gather, one should never actually do on these stories. So I was reading, and many people were saying, oh my gosh, this is so great, look at what God has done for this person. And then there was this comment. And the man, this person commented, said, if your God is so great, why didn't he stop the other man from pushing him onto the tracks? At first I thought the comment crass. And I couldn't believe that somebody would actually write this. I mean, this was truly a story that we should celebrate, that the man was not seriously wounded or killed. Why would somebody say this? But the more I contemplated it, and believe me, it sat with me all week, the more I thought about it, I realized the person who wrote that comment was merely reflecting what I think most of us feel. You see, we had this concept that God is like a genie, a great magician, who will grant our every wish and desire. And oftentimes when you hear people talk about prayer, prayer is set before us as this thing in which we plead before God and, and we pray and we pray and we hope that God will grant our prayers and requests. And then people get disappointed when nothing seems to happen. To make matters worse, and you've heard me say this before, we live in a time in which Christianity is presented under the banner of the prosperity gospel, in which we're told one's holiness, one's goodness, is illustrated by one's blessings. That God's favor is upon those who live righteously. The problem is, most of us suffer. Most of us will go through life never having our prayers granted to us. It's no wonder, actually, that very few people go to church these days. It's no wonder that so many people have left Christianity because there's been this concept that if I do this, then God surely will grant this. And when it doesn't happen, they become discouraged and they leave. And understandably so. The problem with this is Jesus never promised us that life would be easy. In fact, he gives to us something entirely contrary. He says the way of life will more likely lead you to the cross and to suffering and then to resurrection. But the way of faith is tough. It's difficult. Today we heard probably the two most wonderful stories, or at least my favorite stories from the scriptures, the story of Hannah and Elizabeth. Two women who 
were shamed for the very fact that they were unable to give birth. Two women who likely felt ostracized by others, and in fact we heard in that first reading that Hannah suffered greatly because she was unable to have child. Yet both of these women persist in praying. They continually go back to God over and over and over again. Yet for years, nothing seems to happen. To make matters worse, their spouses don't seem to be terribly much help. Although Elkanah is entirely sweet to Hannah, he just is perplexed. He doesn't get why she's sad. Zechariah, who was a priest who should have known that God's promises would be fulfilled in time, goes mute because he's unable to wrap his mind around the concept that God's blessing will be upon Elizabeth in due time. Eli wants to shame Hannah for her prayers, which seem like prayers of a drunken woman. Yet Hannah and Elizabeth persist. You see, both these women, unlike everybody else, all the ones that should have known the narrative of the scriptures, these two women believe deep in their hearts that God will ultimately do God's work in due time. And they never relented. They continually held the hope that God's promises will come with due time. Each woman knew deep in their souls that God's blessings often come about after much anguish, after much trial, and much difficulty. And quite frankly, God's promises may be nothing like that what we ever expected. In both cases, both women give birth ultimately to the two greatest prophets of the scriptures, Samuel and John the Baptist. Now it might be tempting to simply resolve the story by saying, well look, their blessings came about, they got everything that they wanted. But I don't think this is necessarily the point of these stories. Yes, in due time, the woman's prayers were answered. But that's not the point. The point is that they persisted. They remained steadfast, firm, confident, going back to God. Realistically, most of us will have prayers that will go unanswered in life. Does that necessarily mean God is not listening? I've wrestled with this a lot in my own life. Sometimes I've wondered where God was at. You know, I'm struggling with some issue or going through some trial in my life and I, I say to God, where, where are you? What are you doing in this time? Why don't you answer my prayers here and now? And oftentimes, nothing will happen. But then, I'll be walking along or I'll be praying and something will hit me. God was at work in those times. Maybe not doing the thing I wanted God to do, but God was bringing out about a new thing. Some of you may know I was a university chaplain and I used to take students on retreats and on one of our retreats on prayer I had the students spend some time reflecting upon their lives and to sort of chart on a timeline those moments that they remember the good and the bad to chart that along and then I said take some time pray about this 
And then go back and think about how strongly did you feel God in those times? To my surprise, and their surprise as well, the students came back, and the common refrain was, they actually felt God more present in the times of suffering and struggle. And that when they look back, they realize that what they prayed for initially wasn't actually what they got, but something much greater came along in due time. I think that's the lesson here in these texts. That sometimes we need to simply sit and to listen and just be. Not to pose our demands upon God and say, God, you do this, but to be open to the possibility that God is bringing up something new, that God's blessings ultimately will be fulfilled in time. Maybe not the way we expect them to be, but to have trust. That in this time of birth, there will be struggle, there will be pain, there will be anguish, but there will be blessing. And if we're listening, and if we're reflecting close enough, we will see the small ways in which the hand of God enters into our life and changes and works within us. That's why the story of Elizabeth and Hannah are so powerful. Because they sat and listened and trusted that with time, God's blessings would be with them. Amen.